Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of Charity of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Ayyanti Ananda Shama Yagana Sahatya Chaksudhu Nimi Tanya Tashmari Shri Gibale Maha. Sri Chaitanya Manopi Stam Sati Tanya Bhutale Sayonara Bhakarami Andarati Svartaranti Khan. I'd like to talk today about the movies of the mind. According to our literatures, there are four basic needs that we share in common with the animals. Eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing. Eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing. Now of these, fearing is the most prominent. Have you ever seen a pigeon? He doesn't know where the trouble is going to come from and when it's going to come. So he's always looking around. Could come from ground level, could come from above, could come from anywhere. It's full of anxiety. Similarly, this world that we live in, it's built in such a way that it's full of problems. And people are afraid because they don't know when the next problem is going to come, what it's going to be, and from what direction. But here's a consoling word from the Song of God spoken 5,300 years ago by our Creator and Supreme Father, the Lord Sri Krishna. He, of course, goes by other names in other cultures. He says, Krishna says to his friend in the Bodhi Arjuna, Never was there a time, think about it, when I did not exist, well, duh, we all know God's eternal, right? But then he goes on to say, nor you, nor all these other kings arrayed here on the battlefield, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Never was there a time when God did exist, obviously we existed present, nor will there be a time in the future when any of us cease to be. And that means that you, as a living force, not this body, of course, but the living force which is occupying this body in this current incarnation existed before the creation of the universe and will continue to exist after the universe is dissolved. You know, it's called the lotus temple. Why the lotus temple? Because the lotus grows within water and then it, it's always dry. Even when you splash the leaves, the beads of water will slough off and a few seconds later it will be bone dry. So it can be said of the lotus, it's in the water but not of the water. So similarly, we're in this temporary world of birth, death, disease, and old age, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. We're in it, but we're not of it. But you realize that as God exists eternally, I also, as this part and parcel, exist eternally, then really, there shouldn't be anything that would spoil your day. And indeed, all through the day, we have the choice to believe that God or Krishna is in control he has made us so fortunate in the very man of our creation that we can never think of ourselves as unfortunate because we are eternal. God made you indestructible. There's no curse that can take away that initial primeval blessing that you are indestructible. So just think about it for a moment this afternoon. And as his indestructible part and parcel in his own time and in his own way, he has lots of good things in store for you. And we can keep all that in mind. Or we can go around worried, expecting the worst, wondering if we're going to make it. I hear people say, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. I'm afraid this marriage isn't going to work out. I'm afraid my child is getting mixed up with the wrong crowd. So what are these people doing? They're choosing fear, aren't they, over faith. Fear and faith both ask us to believe in something over which we have no control over. Fear says believe the negative, that pain in your side. That's the same thing my grandmother died from. Faith said I just ate too much lasagna for lunch. <laughs> Fear, business is slow, I'm going under. Faith, Krishna and God is supplying all of my need. He can make rivers in the desert. Fear. I've been through too much. I'm never going to be happy. Faith, my best days are out in front of me. Now, if you let the fear play over and over and over again in your mind, it's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to call it into your lap. We've all arrived at points in our lives when we think, this is too good to be true. This house, this wife, this job. So even though 
the house is good, the family's good, the job's good, everything's good. We're still living in fear because we think it's too good. Oftentimes we act in such a destructive way that that fear becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But what we're asking you to do tonight is take the limits off of God. I'll tell you my story. In 1981, my Bobby and I came from Los Angeles to Utah. It seemed almost too good to be true that we were able to put a down payment on a radio station in five acres of land here in Spanish Fork, Utah. It was a bonus that by 1987, we were able to get the funds together to build a log cabin down there about a football field away in which we could have our Sunday services. It seemed too good to be true that in 1991, we were able to scrape up a down payment on another eight and a half acres of land and were able to open a world-class temple right here in 2001. Beyond our wildest expectations in 2012, we were able to purchase a former school with 13,000 square feet of building and four acres of land right downtown Salt Lake City. Incredibly, we raised the money to build an additional temple there from the ground up, which opened in 2019. And nobody would have thought that when we started the Festival of Colors in 1995 with seven people indoors, <laughs> never did that again, that it would grow to be the biggest spiritual festival in all of North America. Every unbelievable, too good to be true step forward has only been a prelude to something else Krishna had in mind, which was bigger and better. Krishna has a practice of taking those who honor him by chanting his holy names from glory to glory, from victory to victory. Now here's the key. The servant of the rich man is going to be prosperous as long as the rich man is prosperous. This is not a fact. One devotee said, I know that goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. How can he say that with such certainty? How can he be sure that his fortune is on such stable ground? Because the Master created millions and millions of universes. The Master is never going to run out of resources. He's never going to go bankrupt. Well, what is that? Simple thing. Choosing faith over fear. Fear causes you to tell yourself it's never going to work out. Fear makes you have plans for defeat. Fear causes you to cringe in your thought life. Fear makes you stay awake at night. Fear drains your joy, your enthusiasm. Now tell yourself this afternoon, if I keep worrying over this and mulling over all the reasons why it's not going to work out, guess what? It's not going to work out. But if you trust Krishna and use that same energy to believe that Krishna will turn it around, cause it to work out to your advantage. If you trust him, he's not only going to bring you out of that trouble, but he's going to bring you out better off than you were before. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Today, there are so many potential troubles, potential words. We hear about cancer. We hear about inflation. We hear about terrorists, gangs, wayward children, war in the Ukraine. Our advice today is don't use your energy to worry. Use your energy to believe. It's just as easy to say, Krishna is supplying all my needs as to say, I'm not going to make it. It takes that same energy to say, I'm going to live a long, healthy life, as to say, I don't think I'll ever get well. Your concern about getting laid off may be valid, but you can't go around meditating on it, calling it in. The key is work, don't worry. Be your best on the job. At the same time, send out your resumes, take courses at night, become a more marketable commodity. Faith in reverse says, I'll never get the breaks. That is a statement of faith. When you make that statement of faith, I'll never get the breaks, faith goes to work, makes it happen. 
But why not take the same energy and flip it? My life is in your hands, Lord. You're guiding my steps. I'm not expecting defeat. I'm not expecting failure. I'm expecting victory. I'm not expecting to go under, Lord, but I'm expecting to go over. Well, true. What if I'm faithful and nothing happens? What if you're faithful and something does happen? <laughs> Here's a verse I ran across this morning. This is from the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the sages speaking to King Nimi. O King, if one accepts this process of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they will never blunder on their path in this world. Even while running with their eyes closed, they will not trip and fall. In the purport, these words are written. Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality, has repeatedly given assurance in the Song of God, Bhagavad Gita, that He will protect and redeem devotees. He will bring them back to home, back to God, for an eternal life in His own kingdom. Thus, the qualification of getting in the middle of what God created you to do is so great and spiritually potent that even if a surrendered soul is deficient in some aspects, his elevated status is protected and guaranteed by the Lord himself. In other processes like yoga, because one depends upon one's own determination and intelligence, it does not actually seek shelter of the Lord when is subject to fall at any moment, being protected by one's own flimsy, limited potency. Keep the right attitude. He'll give you a better job, a better temple, better association. Our encouragement tonight is to raise your expectations. Let me ask you, are you using your energy to believe? Or are you using your energy to worry? Are you expecting a Christian in God's favor? Or are you expecting just to barely get by? Every night for a year, a lady thought she heard a burglar downstairs. Every night she made her husband go down and check that everything was all right. One night she went through the same routine. I think I hear something. Go down and check. The husband went down. What should happen? But he'd be staring right into the barrel of a gun. And a man who said, give me your valuables or else. So the man gave him all his valuables. And the burglar turned to leave. And the man said, wait, wait, wait. Don't leave yet. You've got to go upstairs and meet my wife. She's been waiting for you for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Would you agree with me that, that lady needs to change what she's expecting? Yes. And maybe we need to also stop expecting our children to cause problems. Expect them rather to excel. Do great things in life. Children are going to rise to the level of your expectations. Bruce Wilkerson, a famous author, wrote how he started out as a junior professor in a small New England college. First semester, the professors got their course assignments. One of his colleagues looked over his shoulder and said, Bruce, you lucky dog. Bruce said, what do you mean? He says, looks like out of your five courses, you've got three class A sections. Those are the gifted students. So Bruce went ahead and taught those five courses, and sure enough, the students in the three class A sections wrote bigger term papers, they asked more questions, they got better grades and everything like that. So the next year they're all assembled at the beginning of the semester in the dean's office. And as the dean was passing out the course assignments, Bruce said to the dean, he said, I hope I get section A students again. The dean said, Bruce, what are you talking about? Yeah, the section A students, the gifted students. The dean said, we don't, we don't have any section A students. He said, we had a program like that six years ago, but we discontinued it. What happened there? The students rose to the level of the teacher's expectations. Nowadays, would you agree with me that people are being talked into low expectations, into a bad future, listening to the news, Facebook, the newspapers, TV? I don't know about you, but I'm expecting to have a great future. I'm expecting Christian to prosper the temple. I'm expecting every bad situation to turn around. I have my 76th birthday, what, next uh, Thursday or something. Let's rewind a little. When I was in my 20s, everyone told me, wait again in your 30s. 
That's when bad things start to happen. When I was in my 30s, people told me, wait till you get into your 40s. That's when it gets really rough. And when I was in my 40s, people told me the 50s were really, really bad. And when I was in my 50s, people told me 60 is like free fall over the edge of a cliff. And when I got to my 70s, people said you could drop dead at any moment. Do you know, according to a huge survey, do you know when people are most happy? Between 70 and 75. <laughs> so don't spend your 20s dreading the 30s. Don't spend your 30s dreading the 40s or dreading the 50s and all. Your happiest years, statistically speaking, are going to be between 70 and 75. And even though I'm going to be 76 next week, I've still got good expectations. <laughs> All my life, I haven't fortunately listened to those people who are predicting mediocrity. They haven't been able to chase me down with their doomsayer predictions. And similarly, to stay in faith, we need to be careful who we listen to. Why? Because fear is contagious. We can catch other people's emotions just like we catch a cold. If your friends are always complaining, talking doom and gloom, then I suggest you find some new friends. Because if you stay around them long enough, you're going to catch what they have. You shouldn't, for instance, go to lunch every day with those co-workers who are always crying the blues, talking about how bad their comedy is, how they can't get along with the boss. Some people, I grant you, you have to be around those co-workers, you have to be around that boss. Some of you are married to people like that. But you need to take heavy doses of faith and positivity whenever you're not around them. You need to put in that faith-filled CD during the morning commute. When you go for a walk or go for a run, put in that faith-filled MP3. And most importantly, start every day by honoring the Lord, chanting His holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Be careful what you let in and what you get talked into. We get up in the morning, we turn the news on, we hear doom and gloom, we hear more of it in the talk shows, on the commute, we go to lunch with people to talk about how bad it is, and before you know it, you yourself are living a defeated life. Before we know it, we're dragging through the day. We're asking you not to eke your way through life just because your friends have lost their gusto. Experts may have one report, but we have another report that says we are blessed, we are prosperous, we are talented, we are creative, we are well able. And be careful you don't get all down, grumpy and start thinking, it's okay to fail, it's happening to everybody. Just a matter of time before I lose my house, lose my job, wonder when I'm going to get laid off, wonder when my health is going to go down. Turn that off and keep your mind filled with thoughts of victory. Just as you can be talked into having a bad future, you can get talked into having a good future also. Yes, it's true, fear is contagious, but the good news is that faith is also contagious. Peace is also contagious. Joy is also contagious. Associate with God-centered, God-filled people. Chant the holy names of the Lord like we're doing this afternoon, and you're going to catch victory. You're going to catch hope. Let me warn you. Devotees, God-centered people are radioactive. The more you hang around them, the more you're going to be catching joy, catching peace, the more your faith is going to be increasing. This is a term we call sadhu sangha, the association of purified people on the upward path. And sometimes you have a hard week at school or at work, you don't feel like going to the temple. Can I tell you that's precisely when you need it? more than ever before. That's precisely when you need someone speaking strength and positivity and expectation into you. Any one of us is like a single page in the phone book. But when we're all together in community, watching each other's backs, encouraging and inspiring each other, it's like all the pages of a phone book, even the strongest man can't rip it. Fear is like a fog. It obscures your vision but it makes things look worse than they are. Did you know that a dense fog can cover up to seven city blocks, be 100 feet thick, and yet the actual moisture contained in that fog can fit in a little 
glass of drinking wine. It may look big, it may look intimidating, it may look foreboding, ominous, but the fact is, there's really nothing to it. Just some wispy vapors that can fit into a small shot glass. When fear comes, you think your marriage may not work out. You think the kids are not turning out right. Just look it in the eye and say, you may look impressive, but I know there's nothing really to you. You're just insubstantial, wispy like a fog. All of us have probably been socked in to an airport at one time or another, fog thick like pea soup, can't see your hand in front of your eye. But once you take off, rise above those clouds after three or four seconds, you look down, you see it was just a small pocket of fog. Its bite was not nearly as bad as its bark. Similarly, whatever is facing you may look permanent, but can I tell you, it's only temporary. You are eternal. You will outlast it. It may affect part of your life now, but I know that the sun is still shining, and it's just a matter of time before you rise above the fog. Here's another story. A man stood on the side of the road hitchhiking on a very dark night in the middle of a storm. The storm was so strong he could hardly see a few feet ahead of him. Suddenly he saw a car come towards him and stop. Without thinking about it and grateful, he just immediately got in the car, closed the door, and then on the end did he see there was no one behind the wheel. The car started up again, slowly. The guy looked ahead and he saw a curve coming his way. Scared to death, terrified, he started praying. And he begged for his life. He had barely come out of the shock of being in the driver of this car, moving ahead, when the car went into the curb and a hand <gasps> appeared from the window and moved the wheel. By now the guy is paralyzed in terror. He's watching the hand move the car wheel left and right before every car. The guy got his wits about him. He leaped out of the car, rolled on the pavement, got up and then just ran lickety-split to the nearest town, wet and soaking and in shock. He ran into a cantina. He asked for two shots of tequila. Started telling everybody about the horrible experience that he just had. About a half an hour later, two guys walked into the same cantina. One nudged the other with the elbow, and he said, Look, there's the character who climbed into the car while we were pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make the mistake of magnifying a fear. Imagination always spins out a worst-case scenario, like when you're watching a movie. Negative thoughts can turn into negative imaginations. And if you allow it, a small fear will play out of proportion. A small pain in your side. You think it's cancer. You see yourself fading. You see yourself losing weight, losing your hair, going around in a wheelchair. Before long, you see yourself not being able to take care of yourself. See children gathered around you in the ICU, and you start to see yourself all in your own funeral, just from a little pain in your side. Again, you ate too much lasagna at lunch. So don't let negative pictures play out of control on the movie screen of your mind. God created us to be in charge. You have the remote control. Now use it to choose the right channel. One last story. A lady had been shopping. It was a hot day. She put her groceries in the back seat of the car, closed the doors, the windows were up. She remembered something she forgot, so she went back into the store. She got it. She unlocked her car. She got into the driver's seat, and she reached for the ignition key, and she heard a pop, and something hit the back of her head, and she started screaming, Oh my God! She got all this gooey brain-like stuff, you know. You know, I've been shot! I've been shot! You know, someone came running over to the parking lot. Hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? She said, I've been shot. I've been shot. And the guy said, no, it doesn't appear like that. It just appears like the Pillsbury dog exploded in the back of your head in the heat of the car. <laughs> Here's our suggestion. If you're going to let your imagination run wild, at least let it run in the right direction. Put on a movie in your mind of you accomplishing your dreams. Show the scene of you overcoming that obstacle. See yourself prosperous, rising higher and higher. See your family restored, your children excelling. See yourself fulfilling your destiny. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.
Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Here's a verse from the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately by even unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna who is feared by fear personified. In the purport, Prabhupada Guru writes, there was no one in creation who is not afraid of displeasing the Almighty. Great demons like Ravana, Haranyakashipu, Kamsas, and others who were very powerful living entities were all killed by the personality of Godhead. And the Almighty Lord has empowered His name with all the powers of His personal self. It's not what you think. It's just a loud noise. This too will pass. Put on the right channel. Cast down those wrong imaginations. Do not let those negative pictures play on the movie screen of your mind. You've got the remote control. Change the channel. Don't be talked into having a down future. Go to the place and among the people where you'll be talked into having a great future. There is no obstacle too big for you, child of God. No enemy too powerful. You and Krishna are a majority. You may not see how it can happen, but don't use your energy to worry. Use your energy to believe. Krishna, God, has brought you through in the past. He's going to bring you through in the future. Surround yourself with people of faith who speak victory unto you. If you'll be disciplined in your thought life and learn to choose faith over fear, you're going to overcome every obstacle, defeat every enemy, and accomplish every dream Krishna's put into your heart in this life and in the next life. You're going to go back to home, back to God. Thank you very much. And if any part of this message resonated with you, please raise your arms in the air and say loudly with me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.